Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Friday, April 9th, 2021. What a joy it is to be able to spend this time together with you in God's word, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today, our psalm is a portion of Psalm 145. I exalt you, my God, the King, and bless your name forever and ever. I will bless you every day. I will bless your name forever and ever. The Lord is great and is highly praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation will declare your works to the next and will proclaim your mighty acts. I will speak of your splendor and glorious majesty, majesty and your wondrous works. They will proclaim the power of your awe-inspiring acts, and I will declare your greatness. They will give a testimony of your great goodness and will joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and great in faithful love. The Lord is good to everyone. His compassion rests on all he has made. Our Old Testament reading for today tells us of some advice that Moses' father-in-law gave to Moses to help him be able to deal with the stresses and the responsibilities of leading the people of Israel. Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, along with Moses' wife and sons, came to him in the wilderness where he was camped at the mountain of God. He sent words to Moses, I, your father-in-law, Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, bowed down, and then kissed him. They asked each other how they had been and went into the tent. Moses recounted to his father-in-law all that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardships that confronted them on the way, and how the Lord rescued them. Jethro rejoiced over all the good things the Lord had done for Israel when he rescued them from the power of the Egyptians. Blessed be the Lord, Jethro exclaimed, who rescued you from the power of Egypt and from the power of Pharaoh. He has rescued the people from under the power of Egypt. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, because he did wonders when the Egyptians acted arrogantly against Israel. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat a meal with Moses' father-in-law in God's presence. The next day, Moses sat down to judge the people, and they stood around Moses from morning until evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw everything he was doing for them, he asked, What is this you're doing for the people? Why are you alone sitting as judge, while all the people stand around you from morning until evening? Moses replied to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. Whenever they have a dispute, it comes to me and I make a decision between one man and another. I teach them God's statutes and laws. What you're doing is not good, Moses' father-in-law said to him. You will certainly wear out both yourself and these people who are with you, because the task is too heavy for you. You can't do it alone. Now listen to me. I will give you some advice, and God be with you. You be the one to represent the people before God and bring their cases to him. Instruct them about the statutes and laws, and teach them the way to live and what they must do. But you should select from all the people able men, God-fearing, trustworthy, and hating dishonest prophet. Place them over the people as commanders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They should judge the people at all times. Then they can bring you every major case, but judge every minor case themselves. In this way, you will lighten your load, and they will bear it with you. If you do this, and God so directs you, you will be able to endure, and also all these people will be able to go home satisfied. Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. So Moses chose able men from all Israel and made them leaders over the people as commanders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They judged the people at all times. They would bring the hard cases to Moses but they would judge every minor case themselves. Moses let his father-in-law go, and he journeyed to his own land. Yesterday, we heard that great 
hall of faith, that listing of those who demonstrated their faith by trusting in God's promises, even though they did not, within their own lifetimes, experience the fulfillment of all of those prophecy, prophecies. Today, we're going to hear that that great cloud of witnesses continues to encourage us in our faith and our trust in the promises of God. Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, so that you won't grow weary and give up. In struggling against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My sons, my son, don't, do not take the Lord's discipline lightly or lose heart when you are reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and punishes every son he receives. Endure suffering as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons. For what son is there that a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, which all receive, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had human fathers discipline us and we respected them. Shouldn't we submit even more to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time based on what seemed good to them, but he does it for our benefit, so that he, we can share in his holiness. No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your tired hands and weakened knees, and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed instead. Pursue peace with everyone and holiness. Without it, no one will see the Lord. Make sure that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitterness, no root of bitter bitterness springs up, causing trouble and defiling many. And make sure that there isn't any immoral or irreverent person like Esau, who sold his birthright in exchange for a single meal. For you know that later, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, even though he sought it with tears, because he didn't find any opportunity for repentance. For you have not come to what could be touched, to a blazing fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to the blast of a trumpet and the sound of words. Those who heard it begged that not another word be spoken of them, for they could not hear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The appearance was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. Instead, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to myriads of angels, a festive gathering, to the assembly of the firstborn whose names have been written in heaven, to a judge who is God of all, to the spirits of righteous people made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood, which says better things than the blood of Abel. Our writing for today comes from Cyril of Jerusalem. Would you be persuaded that Christ willingly went to his passion? Others who do not know of their death beforehand died unwillingly. But he spoke before his passion. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Do you know why this friend of man did not shun death? It was so the whole world would not perish in its sins. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed and shall be crucified. And he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And would you know with certainty that the cross is a glory to Jesus? Hear his own words, not mine. Judas had become ungrateful to the master of the house and was about to betray him. Having just gone forth from the table and having drunk his cup of blessing, in return for that draft of salvation, he sought to shed righteous blood. Who did eat of his bread was lifting up his heel against him. 
his hands had but recently received the blessed gifts and presently for the wages of betrayal, he was plotting his death. Being reproved and having heard that word, you have said it, he again went out. Then Jesus said, the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified. Do you see how he knew the cross to be his proper glory? What should Isaiah not be ashamed of being sawn in part? And Christ should be ashamed of dying the world. Now is that, now is the son of man glorified? Not that he was without glory before then, for he was glorified with glory that was before the foundation of the world. He, never, he was never glorified as God, but now he was to be glorified in wearing the crown of his patience. He did not give up his life by compulsion, nor was he put to death by mur murderous violence, but of his own accord. Hear what he says. I have power to lay down my life and I have power to take it up again. I yield it of my own choice to my enemies, for unless I so choose, this could not be. He came, therefore, of his own set purpose and his passion, rejoicing in his noble deed, smiling at the crown, cheered by the salvation of mankind, not ashamed of the cross. For it was to save the world. For it was no common man who suffered, but God in man's nature, striving for the prize of his patience. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, Saints, See the cloud of witnesses. They call to us, your timid footsteps lengthen. Throw off sin's weight, your halting weakness strengthen. My kept, we kept the faith, we shed our blood, were martyred. Our lives were battered. Now we pray. Almighty God, you show those in error the light of your truth so that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant faithfulness to all who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's church, that they may avoid whatever is contrary to their confession and follow all such things as are pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you all so much for spending this time together with me in God's word. May the Lord richly bless your day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.